Hello and good morning. Happy Wednesday. Yes, I'm starting this vlog out on a Wednesday. Don't mind me. I'm just unwrapping some stuff that I ordered from Ulta. I needed new like shampoo and stuff. But I don't have a whole lot of time, so I wanted to hop on here and update you guys real quick. Um, but yeah, this past weekend has been... I read a little bit. I read... Oh, what did I read? Saga Volume 6, which was really great, but also really sad, um, as they have tended to be recently. Um, and then I also have read a good bit of Kill Creek. I don't know what page I'm on with that. Um, well, it looks like my conditioner exploded. Anyway, I'm gonna set this down because I'm just gonna make a mess. But, uh, yeah, that's like all I've done. Um, this is the beginning, today is the beginning of my super crazy work week. I work Wednesday through Sunday, so Wednesday is 11 hours, Thursday is 11 hours, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are 12 hours. So it's gonna be a crazy week, but I'm hoping that means since I'll be at work and for three of those shifts I'll be by myself that I can get a lot of reading done because last week I worked by myself quite a bit and I got a good bit of reading done then too. But I do have some book mail for you. Um, well, for me that I want to show you. I ordered one of these and then one of these was actually sent to me from Orbit and Hatchet. So the one that was sent to me from Orbit is The Wintered Road. The Winter Road by Adrian Selby. This is a book that I asked for because I wanted to review it. Um, but it says, The Circle, a thousand miles of perilous forests and warring, warring clans. No one has ever tamed such treacherous territory before, but ex-soldier Ter Amonson, veteran of a hundred battles, is determined to try. With a merchant caravan protected by a crew of skilled mercenaries, Terran embarks on a dangerous mission to forge a road across the untamed wilderness that was once her home. But a warlord has risen in the wilds of the Circle, uniting its clans and terrorizing its people. Terra's battles are far from over. Um, this just sounds really cool. I've been wanting more female main character fantasy books and I've been wanting more winter female main character fantasy books because winter is coming. Cue Game of Thrones music. And I wanted to have something more for the season to read. So I did ask to request that. I'm not sure when this is releasing. Give me one second. I guess I could Google it. I'll put it on the screen when it releases because I'm going to edit when I edit this video, I'll edit when um, this is actually coming out. But it sounds really cool. Um, and the cover is beautiful. I just, I love Orbit. Orbit books, like the books themselves, like the paperback versions of them are really amazing and the covers are always stunning. And the next book that I have here is a book that I purchased and I didn't realize how little this was, but it'd be Elevation by Stephen King. I don't know if you guys can tell, this book is tiny. It's like a hundred and some pages. Like, let's see here. It is 146 pages. I don't know why recently he's coming out with a bunch of really small books. Like, Gwendy's Button Box was really small, you know what I mean? It's just strange. It's, it's okay because obviously he, he can do what he wants to do, but this is a, a little bit more political than I was expecting it to be. Um, we're back to Castle Rock, which I'm really excited about. Um, but it says, Castle Rock is a small town where word gets around quickly. That's why Scott Carey wants to confide only in his friend Dr. Bob Ellis about his strange condition. He's losing weight without getting thinner, and the scales register the same whether he's in his clothes or out of them, no matter how heavy they are. Scott also has new neighbors who have opened a fine dining experience in town, although it's an experience being shunned by the locals. Deidre McComb and her wife Missy Donald said don't exactly confirm to a lifestyle the community approve of, approves of. <laughs> approves of. And now Scott seems trapped in a feud with a couple over their dogs dropping their business on his lawn. Missy may be warm and friendly, but Deidre is cold as ice. <clears throat> As the town prepares for the annual Thanksgiving 12k run, Scott begins to understand the prejudices the women face and tries to help. Unlikely alliances form and the mystery of Scott's affliction brings out the best in people who have indulged the worst in themselves and others. I don't know. It, it says, comes this compelling tale about finding common ground despite differences, a magical story with a deep resonance for our time. Resonance for our time. The thing about this is, ah, look. Stephen King is very political, and that's fine, because we need people in 
the more popular, more powerful positions to be talking about politics and what's wrong with it. But literally everything that he posts is political. And this book is political, like from the sound of it. Like it just sounds, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not going to like it. It's beautiful though. I don't know if you can tell the cover is beautiful and then the inside is beautiful. I'm sad. We'll see. I'm disappointed that it's super small and I don't know if I'm going to like the content, but I am obviously going to give it a try. I'm actually going to put this in my bag right now because I'm going to bring it to work with me and hopefully see what I think of it. But yeah, for now, this is going to be my update. I am going to make some coffee, clean off all the shampoo and conditioner that is all over my bottles and take a shower. Yeah, that is it. I will see you guys in my next update, maybe a little bit later if I get to read any. If not, it'll be tomorrow morning, but yeah, that's gonna be it. I will see you guys a little bit later. Good morning and happy Thursday, November 1st, guys. It's November 1st. While I am sad that October is over because you guys know it is my favorite season, I also really like November. November is the cozy month for me without being quite as cold as Christmas, which gets me into the second part of this update. But first off, I'm gonna let you know, I have peppermint mocha in my coffee today because the second November hit, I was like, out with the pumpkin spice, in with peppermint mocha. But, uh, sorry, I just ran up the stairs. So I'm way out of breath because I'm way out of shape. But I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about what I read yesterday. So, the first thing that I read, there's actually going to be a separate reading vlog going up for that, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on how I'm feeling about it. I only have the dust jacket here, the book is actually downstairs, but I'm reading Elevation by Stephen King. I'm about 25 pages in, it's 146 pages, it's a super tiny book, like, I don't know if you guys can tell from the dust jacket, it's the size of my head, and it's really, really thin, but I'm actually liking it. I was a little bit nervous that I wouldn't, because it is more on the political side. It's about a man who, whether he's naked, or wearing a bunch of clothes with or holding weights he weighs the same no matter what when he is weighed but he is losing weight according to the scales but he doesn't look any different but he has that he's like going through a divorce or just went through a divorce and he lives in Castle Rock which I'm really excited about because Castle Rock is one of my absolute top favorite king places am I ever gonna catch my breath Jesus Christ <sighs> um but there are, there's a lesbian couple that moves into his town and they own a restaurant and they kind of go at each other because their dog shit in his lawn all the time. And when he tries to approach them about it, they kind of go off on him like, oh, you're just saying this because we're lesbians, which he doesn't feel like that. You know from his perspective that he doesn't feel like that. And so far it's really interesting. But like I said, I'm only like 30 pages in, but of a 140 page book, that's pretty far. But I do like it, I stayed up really late um, reading it, but there will be a full vlog on that. And the other thing that I read yesterday, the only other thing that I read yesterday that I got so sucked into, but we were kind of busy and I was working by myself, so it was sort of hard because it was Halloween. It would be Pet Cemetery. I'm on page 203 of this. Of my edition is not that large. My edition is 373 pages. So I'm almost like what three fourths of the way through with it right now, or half the way through with it, something like that. I'm going to finish it tonight at work. I am training someone new, but I'm hoping I'll have time to read it. It is so good, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about spoilers for the book. I'm going to hold up the book when I put the book down. If you haven't read it, you guys can start watching again. Okay, ready? <laughs> so I'm at the part right now where church has come back their cat has come back to life and everyone in the house is pretty freaked out about it the neighbor judd's wife has actually passed away and their daughter is coming to terms with death and judd you know kind of helped him bring church back or told him about church coming back because he wanted his daughter to kind of understand death judd wanted our main character's daughter to understand death and to accept death because in the town they live in that's pretty important because a lot of people know about the burial grounds and how they bring people back and judd needed to he says at one point pass it on to him to kind of get it out of his system um i'm really excited i think if i remember right what happens next is their son actually dies and they try to bring him back i'm pretty sure he gets hit by a truck like the same trucks that ran church over 
We'll see. I'm pretty sure that's what it was from the movie, but the book is so fucking creepy. Like, you're reading it and it just gives you these vibes. Like, it's very terrifying, but I am absolutely loving it. So if you guys want to follow along or you guys want to discuss it, we obviously have our Constantly Reading Club. We have moved on to our new book, which is actually The Stand. We are reading The Stand, and I cannot find a cut version of that book. So the, it, both editions that I have, I have one that I've had for a long time. It's almost 11, it's 1200 pages, I think. I ordered one off of Amazon, not realizing that it was also uncut, and it is 1100 pages. But half the pages are missing, so I'm going to be returning that one and trying to find a cut version of it because I do not have time to read an 1100 page book this month. But I did also try to read the, the audiobook from the library, so hopefully I'll get around to that. But that's all I read yesterday. I did read a little bit of Saga Volume 6 as well. I'm like barely into this. I'm like 10 pages into it. I love Saga, and I've been inhaling the comics this month. So... Yeah, but it is November, so a lot of the books that I was reading, I'm going to be bringing with me into November, so when I do my wrap-up, it's going to be a little bit weird. Also, there's a readathon with Penguin Teen that I'm going to be participating in in the month of November, but it's actually really cool because it is a fantasy read-along, and it does have a lot of diversity, um, a lot of the prompts center around diversity, LGBT, a book you've had on your TBR for a long time, primarily fantasy, and there are eight prompts, I believe, and the goal is to read four books. I'll be doing a whole video for that later, but what I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about today, because a lot of you said when you watch my vlogs, it's like hanging out with a friend, so I thought you guys might be interested in this. If you don't know, I am always cold. I'm constantly cold. I have a blanket in my office. I have a heated blanket downstairs. I sleep with two blankets. I always have the heat on. I could be cold in the middle of the summer. Like, I... We used to live in a house that didn't have air conditioning and I would still need a blanket. I am just a very cold person, which makes me sound kind of like a bitch, but where's the lie? So today I wanted to show you really quickly, um, if you follow me on Twitter you'll know that I did not want to be cold this winter so I placed a pretty big order to Forever 21 for some winter clothes. I do not like purchasing fast fashion. Um, Forever 21 is definitely one of those sites that does that. However, I do purchase more expensive things from them because they last longer and I feel like they're a little less than, they're a little bit better than fast fashion. But I wanted to show you guys what I got. So the first thing I got is the thing that I'm most excited about. This is, if you guys don't know, I don't wear leather or animal fur or wool or anything like that. Um, so I did get a new winter coat. This coat was really expensive. It was like $70. But honestly, I keep buying really shitty coats from like Old Navy and they break down or they don't keep me warm. So I actually went and bought a parka. This is a parka. Like a straight, it's got like, um kind of material that is sort of waterproof and the inside's super fuzzy and warm and it's just it's really long too it will come probably about to my top the top of my thighs which is what I really want like y'all I'm so tired of being cold you have no idea <laughs> the other thing that I got is just a black t-shirt I don't know if you guys have seen me wear it I have like a white t-shirt that has big like black flowers on it and it kind of has these rolled sleeves I just bought the black version of that because I love this, it's really hard to see because it's just a black t-shirt, but I love that shirt so much, but I wanted just like a neutral version of it. And the next thing I bought, I bought so many sweaters, y'all, like so many sweaters. I just bought a hunter green kind of v-neck sweater. I, it's kind of itchy, but that's okay with me. What's it made out of? Oh, okay, it's just polyester, but either way, it's going to be warm. I'm really looking forward to layering things this winter, and I just, I don't want to be cold, like, at all. And a lot of this stuff can move into, from fall into winter, too, because it's not quite winter here, but it's getting cold enough where I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, can I carry my blanket around with me constantly? The other thing that I got is a big hooded sweater. It's just a white hooded sweater, but if you guys could feel this, this weighs a lot. Like, it's a braided sweater, so it's knit and also braided, and it's super heavy. Does this have pockets, actually? Oh my god, it has pockets, yay! But I have my big orange sweater. I know you guys see me wear it a lot, but it was also from Forever 21. It's not quite as thick or quite as heavy, but I'm just really excited to have big, comfy sweaters. Like, I wasn't kidding. I went all out with, like, comfortable, warm clothes. The next thing I bought, I'm actually also really excited about, it is a bralette. I don't like wearing normal bras, they really hurt um, my arms, like right here. So I did buy a bralette, it's just, it's cute. It's got like mesh on the bottom of it and I'm really excited to wear it because I feel like the mesh will 
not cut into my skin, which is another problem I have sometimes. Do I have any other sweaters? Well, I guess I bought lost sweaters and I thought I did. <laughs> anyway, um, the next few things that I bought were leggings because sometimes I like to wear leggings around the house. I don't often go out in leggings because I just feel kind of naked in a way. I just feel like there's not enough fabric like covering me. But these ones I got because they reminded me of Transformers, which is one of my favorite movie franchises. I love the first two. The third one is garbage. The fourth one's okay. I haven't seen the most recent one. But these reminded me of Bumblebee, so I got them. And I asked my husband if he liked them, and he said 10 out of 10 I would wear them, which means he likes them. Um, my husband's always sad that girls get like super cute clothes and guys don't. Uh, the next pair that I bought just looked like this. They're just gray and white striped on the bottom. These are really soft. I actually saw a YouTuber do a video on uh, Forever 21 leggings and how they were actually pretty good quality. So I'm excited to have these. I mean, they were like 23 bucks a piece, so they're not necessarily cheap because I, the leggings that I always wear are from this little shop in the mall by my house and it is like, <laughs> I don't know, like 10 pair for like $40 or something. And the last pair that I got just looks like this. They're like a cool like fade design. Um, they're a little bit shorter, which I don't necessarily love because I have fat calves, but whatever. And the last clothing thing that I got is a pair of overalls. It is a little overall dress. It's pretty short. It'll probably go to probably my thighs. Um, but it does have big pockets on the front of it. It zips down the front and it is corduroy. I am so loving the fact that the 90s clothing is coming back, y'all. Like, coming back. Uh, the other not clothing item thing that I got was, I, I love Batiste dry shampoo and I got the cherry scent because I want to carry it around in my purse so I got the little mini version. You guys don't know, I get asked quite often, ooh, I get asked quite often how I'm able to keep my hair color. Recently my hair's been fading a lot more because I don't have dry shampoo, but I just honestly don't wash my hair that often. I wash my hair once every... Mm, nine days once every nine days I'll wash my hair because that's honestly like when people are like how do you what's the best way to keep your hair color just don't wash your hair that often and eventually you train your hair to not need to be washed that often which is always the end goal because washing your hair a bunch is actually really bad for you the two other things that I got are actually bags I have become obsessed with tiny like little book bags if you guys know I bought the bag that I have right now that I carry around is just like also from Forever 21 but it is a bigger book bag and it just kind of like folds over and you can tighten it and I was like oh I'll buy this so that I can stop carrying around so many books I'll just carry around like one or two books and I'll curb my need to read like 17 books at once no y'all I have so many books in here right now not including I have Pet Cemetery and Elevation in here at the same time so I'm not carrying any less so I bought even smaller bags that books can't fit into so that when I'm not at work or not working during the week I have just a little bag to carry like my wallet and my phone around in. This is the first one. It's just a kind of beveled backpack. It's really really tiny. I don't know if you can tell. It's like about the size of my head but it has like a little handle or you can wear it as a backpack which is probably what I'll do but I because I love having my hands free I really like this. It's just one giant pocket. There aren't like sides or anything in it. And I think it'll be perfect just to like carry around and not keep a bunch of shit in it. Just one. Like just my wallet and my phone. And then I got another little backpack. And this might be my favorite bag I've ever purchased. It's just stunning. And I don't think that there are, there are tiny little pockets on the inside, but this is what it looks like. It is just a backpack. And once again, these are vegan. It's not real leather. It'd be a lot more expensive than what I paid for if it was real leather. But I love it. Once again, it has another handle or you can wear it as a backpack, but I love this, this like loop, but that's how you open it. And then on the inside, once again, it is just a big, you know, storage space. But it does have those like little pockets on the side that you can put like, like I carry my birth control around with me or like my chapstick. So it'll be nice to have it for that. But I'm really excited just to have smaller bags and like, warmer clothes. I do have a little bit of winter clothes from last year, but I needed a new coat. I wanted some more sweaters. I wanted some more like, a lot of the clothes that I own are summer or, you know, like winter. 
So I wanted some clothes that can transition from fall into winter or like winter into spring kind of thing. So I needed to add a little bit more. I actually am getting ready to go through and get rid of a bunch of clothes again. I did that when spring hit. So I think it's time to do that when winter hits because a lot of the winter clothes that I have are pretty old. So I need to just purge some of my clothes. But yeah, that is my clothing haul. That is my Forever 21 clothing haul. That's all the shit I put on my credit card because I'm still paying ridiculous medical bills. Yay for living in the United States. But that is going to be it for this update. I'm going to try to read a little bit before I go to work. Although honestly, I'll probably just end up working on stuff instead. But hopefully by the time you guys see me, I will have finished Pet Cemetery. Like I said, I do train somebody tonight. But I'm hoping she won't be insulted if I just want to read because we're probably going to be pretty slow. But yeah, I guess that is it. I will see you guys in my next update. Hello and good morning. I have my coffee with me. They have the cute Starbucks winter cups out now and I actually really like this one so I'm super excited for it. I mean not that it makes my coffee taste any better or any worse but I wanted to hop on here because it is Friday. It is Friday morning and my week is going by really slowly but I'm excited that it's Friday because the weekends always kind of go by kind of fast. But I wanted to sit down and show you guys the books that I'm going to be trying to read tonight or trying to read over the weekend and then just give you updates for them. The first one that I want to talk about is Elevation by Stephen King. This is a very small book. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's really tiny. It's like 140 some pages. I am excited to read it. There's going to be a vlog dedicated to just this book going up later this week. So keep an eye out for that if you've been wanting to know whether or not you should pick up the book. The other book that I am currently reading is Kill Creek. I'm not going to take it out of the sleeve that it's in because you guys have heard me speak about this. I'm on page 79 of that currently and I'm actually really liking it. It's a lot scarier than I thought it was going to be. I was talking to my friend Bunny about it and we were both kind of like, wow, this is actually quite terrifying. It might be scarier than any Stephen King book I've ever read, which is saying a lot because Stephen King does terrify me quite often because it's more so about people. Oh, that reminds me. Two things about Stephen King. One, I think in my last update that I did, I talked about our quarterly book club book, and I was wrong about which one we are reading. I said we were reading The Stand. We're not reading The Stand. We're reading Salem's Lot, which is good for me because I can't find an edited version of The Stand, and that book is fucking huge, and I don't have time to read and a like 1100 page book so we are reading Salem's Lot it is much shorter I think my copy is like 500 pages a little under or a little over 500 pages much more manageable the other thing that I didn't update you guys about when I got home last night because I was so tired and I had to edit a video and then I just passed out I finished Pet Cemetery, and you guys that ending was horrifying if you have not read the book um I'll put my hand up and when I'm done talking about the book you can click back in if you haven't read it. I loved that book. The ending was ridiculous. So eventually their son does die like I thought he did and then they go through the funeral, they go through the burial, and then he decides that he's going to exhume him and bring him to the cemetery to put him in there. And eventually what happens is their daughter, his wife and his daughter go to stay with her parents and he, because, you know, he wants to do this, bring his son back, see if he is normal, and then, you know, kill him again if he's not, or let him live if he is. Well, what ends up happening is his daughter starts having these visions of what's happening, so his wife heads home. Well, the boy wakes back up and actually kills Judd, and then his wife shows up, and he kills his wife. And the end of the book, um, Lewis is all white hair, very old, going to the pet cemetery to bury his wife. And it's just, it's such a book about love and family and, you know, just mourning. And oh my God, it's so good. Like I love Stephen's books where like the kid was terrible, like terrifying when he came back, but just more so like how people think is what really gets me. So I love that book. I'm going to give it like four and a half stars. I, there was parts of it where I was just like, eh, I don't really care, but the characters really made it for me in this and their relationships, which is something that Steven's really good at. So I did truly love the book. Um, so yeah, four and a half stars. I'll probably just end up giving it five because it was closer to like 4.75 than 4.5 or closer than four. Um, so yeah, that is what I thought of that. And like I said, we are reading The Stand for, or Salem's Lot. I'm never going to get that right. Salem's Lot for the Constantly Reading Club. And I'm really excited to start that today. But that's going to be it for this update. I need to read a little bit of Elevation before I go into work. Um, and like I said, if you guys want to know my full review on this, there will be a vlog going up later this week. So I will see you guys hopefully. It'll probably be tomorrow. 
yeah, it'll probably be tomorrow or tomorrow night because tonight when I get off work, I have about six hours between the two shifts that I need to sleep and then get up and get to work. So I won't really have time to update you guys. So I will see you tomorrow. Hello and good morning. Oh, it's awfully dark on the camera. I'm sorry. It's kind of gloomy out today. It is Monday. I am wrapping up this vlog. I know, like, watching back some of the footage, um, it's a pretty all over there kind of vlog. I actually read quite a bit, but wasn't able to fully update you guys. I'm actually kind of sick. Um, I have just like a really scratchy throat, but I feel kind of okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm not sick sick, but my throat hurts. It's my life. That's literally my life. Um, but I think it's because I worked so much this weekend, which is part of the reason why you guys haven't seen me since Friday. Uh, Friday night, I worked 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. And then Saturday, I worked 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And then Sunday, yesterday, I worked 12 to 12. And I ended the week with about 54 hours. Now, that's not normal for me. I don't normally work those hours. Um, I think I mentioned earlier in the vlog that I worked them because a coworker and friend of mine wanted to take her daughter out for trick-or-treating, which was on Wednesday, so I worked Wednesday. And so I worked a lot of hours. It wasn't that difficult of a week. I remember in the vlog, I was, or in last week's vlog, I was talking about how anxious I was about it. But it actually was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I just didn't really have time to update you guys because I was getting up super early and going to bed right away and there wasn't really time to check in with you. So I'm going to do an overall check-in of what I read over the past weekend as well as what I'm currently reading, what I'm going to be bringing in with me to the next vlog. The first book that I read, I guess I should put the dust jacket back on it. I have some thoughts about this book. There's actually going to be a vlog going up tomorrow that is all about this book. So I'm not going to stay here for too long, but it'd be Elevation by Stephen King. If you guys follow me on Goodreads, this review is already up. It's actually one of the few reviews I've written recently. I need to take time over the next three days and actually sit down and review the rest of the books that I have. I ended up giving this three stars. <clears throat> I just, at the very bare bones of it, I didn't connect with the story. I It follows our main character, Scott, who weighs as much with a bunch of clothing on as he does if he's completely naked and he's rapidly losing weight. And this lesbian couple moves in next door to him and they own a restaurant in the town. This does take place in Castle Rock. And I love Castle Rock. It is my favorite Stephen King setting. And the they get discriminated against within the town and Scott tries to befriend them. One of them is really kind of cold and crabby and the other one's just like, she's really nice and like, you know, she's, I mean, she's experienced being judged and you know, people not talking to them or, you know, because they're lesbians. But she's still a nice person and their dogs actually shit on Scott's lawn and he's trying to be like, hey, like, don't let your dogs do that. And they, you know, are, they assume that it's because they're a lesbian that he is being upset with them, but that's not what it is. They do eventually, like, kind of work things out. I liked the ending of this book. I liked the affliction that Scott had. I thought it was really interesting, but honestly, this book just felt really rushed. I ended up giving it three stars. I mean, I can honestly give it two, but I did enjoy it. It is more of a political book. I do like that Stephen kind of addressed those things, but it was just very, I feel like, I feel like it's a book that maybe could have been, like, 300 pages, 350 pages, you know, it doesn't need to be like a massive book like he normally writes, but maybe one of his shorter ones, but not 146 pages, it just, it didn't, I don't know, I think I found one that I didn't really like, uh, which is really sad because I adore Stephen King, but if you guys want a full update on like everything as I'm reading it, uh, that will be going up tomorrow. The next book that I finished, and oh my god, I loved it. I don't remember what I rated this. Give me one second. I don't know if I gave it four stars or five stars. I think I gave it four stars because there were a few things about it that I wasn't 100% obsessed with, but I still, the book was just so good. Give me one second. Yeah, I gave it four stars. Okay, so the book that I'm talking about is Kill Creek. You guys know I've been reading this for about two weeks now. Once I hit about 100 pages, it just took off. This book is really, really kind of terrifying. Now the author of this book, Scott Thomas, actually used to write for Disney. He used to do Disney shows, Disney movies, um, just a bunch of different stuff if you read about him. And I was just not expecting this. It's, it's broken up into different parts. I believe it's broken up into five parts. The first part, what this follows is a group of four authors. One of them is a pillar in the community. He's sort of the Stephen King of the horror genre. 
one of them whose last name is Slaughter, he, Daniel Slaughter, he is more of a YA horror author. Our main character is a more like mainstream author. Um, ow, sorry. His name is Sam. I actually really like him. He's probably the character that I like the most. And there's an off author named T.C. Moore, I think is her name. She is more of an indie author and she does like really in your face stuff. And I liked her eventually, but at the beginning of the book I thought she was a bitch and I hated her. But in the first part they go to visit this home. And it is a house that a man built um, for him and what was going I don't know if they were married or they were just together his wife who was a former slave uh, He built it for her and you know They were together in the house and these men broke in and killed him but made him watch You know him kill them kill and rape his wife and they strung her his girlfriend and they strung her up from a tree and Then these two women buy the house later on like way later on in the future and they're basically just these like older women and they die in the house and that's why they think the, ha the house is haunted and it's like you know old old wives tales or whatever so the first part of the book they actually do an interview with a man who runs like a horror blog online and they do a live interview with him to put up on the website in this haunted house now nothing really spooky happens in the first part but you definitely like there are certain things that happen and you get a little bit creeped out the second part they're actually followed home by this being and it's like more hauntings there and then eventually they go back to the house and like all hell breaks loose like I can see why they're making this into I don't know if it's a show or a movie but it's absolutely horrifying I gave it four stars the only thing that I didn't like about the book but was enough of a nuisance to me that I didn't like it really affected me that it brought me down a star one it was slightly predictable I kind of saw the big like ending like the last like 10 page ending I saw that coming from like a mile away um, and there were like other little things which I can't think of right now that as I was reading I was like, oh, I know what's gonna happen But it was still even though I knew it was still really good. It was still super enjoyable The only other thing that I did not like at all was the perspectives. So for example as you're reading um, There are no there are so many perspectives. It's done from Daniel Sam T.C. Moore and, oh my god, what's the, the, the older gentleman, I can't remember his name right now, um, done from all of their perspectives, and the thing, Sebastian, that's his name, and the thing is, when they switch the perspectives, there's no clear indication, so the new, there's like not even a change in like paragraph or anything like that, sometimes it'll be on the beginning of the next page, but it's still very confusing, and it's like, you have to kind of try to figure out who is talking at the time and that really drove me nuts so for that reason I took off a star but I still think this book is enjoyable a four star rating for me is I thoroughly enjoyed a book and I think most people would enjoy the book and I got a great experience from it five stars for me is I think absolutely everybody should read this book but I just really enjoyed it I wasn't expecting to but I absolutely did I really I can't wait for the movie or show or whatever they're doing um, now I'm gonna get into what I'm currently reading. Are these the only things that I'm reading? I feel like I'm reading more than this, but I could also have finally gotten my Goodreads down to like an appropriate number as opposed to the 1800 that I keep trying to read. So I'm still reading Saga Volume 6. I don't even know where that is, honestly. I think I lost it. Um, but I have also started The Last Nemsara. I am reading that from the library. I've heard pretty negative things about it, but I still wanted to read it because I, I don't know, I haven't heard, and most people that I, whose reviews I trusted haven't read it, so I kind of want to know, you know, what to expect. Um, I'm listening to this book, but I do obviously have a physical copy here. I'm listening to Kingdom of Ash. I'm 10% of the way through it. I can't get through a chapter without crying. I don't care what anyone says, I just, I love this series so much and I love the characters so much and I can identify and accept that it is quite problematic in many ways and that there are, there needs to be more diversity within the series, there needs, you know what I mean? But I still really like it. I'm kind of sad that there isn't. And I'm hoping that moving forward, Sarah will start adapting those things into her writings because she has such a large fan base. It'd be nice if you could see yourself re represented in one of her books, but I still really like it. I can't help it. I'm 10% of the way through that. I am on page 32 of Salem's Lot. This is our 
constantly reading a book club book and I don't know much about Salem's Lot. All that has happened in this book is our main character is a young boy and he starts off with a man they're essentially running away. I don't know what the man does um, but he's quite wealthy. Um, and the boy actually grows up and then revisits Salem's Lot and I guess there was a great fire and Salem's Lot was kind of wiped out. That's all I know about it. I know that it's like a classic Stephen King book and I haven't read it and like who even am I but I just haven't. And the last book that I'm reading is The Winter Road by Adrian Selby. I don't know much about this um, other than there are warring clans and what I've got from it so far, Tara, our main character, is a woman who used to be a soldier and for some reason in the beginning of this book she is trying to die or waking up dead and it's it's kind of confusing so far but I really like the setting and I really like Tara. The only thing I don't like about the book so far is the way that some of the dialogue is. Um, for example it says here I was standing before the chief of Citadel Hillfast, Chief Oathbutter, which by the way is the most hilarious name ever. We was in his chamber of justice. So I think that the kind of like dialogue that they use is a little bit weird. The rest of the story isn't written like that, but when they do it kind of from her perspective sometimes, they talk like that, so it's a bit confusing. But I'm still really liking it. But that is what I am reading this week, and I think that's going to be it for this update because I need to get ready to film. I have a friend coming over tonight to hang out and eat dinner while my husband is at D&D, &D, so yeah, I need to get ready. But I hope you guys had a good week. I'm sorry this vlog was all over the place. I really tried my best with what I had this week with the time that I had. But I hope you guys liked it anyway. I love you so much and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye!